Hello and welcome back to the cockpit of the Aerosoft CRJ700. Today we're going to be demonstrating a new feature that's available in version 1.0.3.0 which now gives your co-pilot the ability to enter the company route into the FMS to import your flight plan from SimBrief. In order to have this feature work you need to ensure that you uh, download the flight plan from SimBrief and put it into the correct folder. I highly encourage you to use the SimBrief downloader application which automatically detects the uh, correct folders. A tutorial on SimBrief and how to use it is a little beyond the scope of this uh, video, but there are plenty of them out there. I highly encourage you to use that. All right, one other note uh, I would like to uh, bring to your attention before we get started is this is all predicated on the new um, uh, configuration and option program FMS, which can be found here. Uh, if you don't want your co-pilot to do uh, any of the activities I'm about to show you, all you have to do is deselect that and you can go about programming your FMS uh, as you choose. All right, so let's go to go ahead and leave it selected because we want to demonstrate. Uh, let's go ahead and fire up our electronic flight bag, open the door so the co-pilot can enter the, uh, enter the cockpit. Uh, and I know we're going to use, be using ground power unit, our ground power today. So I'm Good gonna, afternoon, Captain. I'm going to go ahead and connect our, our GPU. Pre-flight flow started. Uh, here comes the safety checks. And powering up the aircraft. And, uh, and while they're uh, doing that, uh, actually, no, we're good. we'll stay right here. I'll enter my performance data here in a little bit. Let's get the, uh, get the yokes out of the way. Uh, so the co-pilot's setting the external lights, setting our, uh, our IRS units. Now you should see him after he sets the uh, IRS. Here he comes. He's now down here on his FMS, and he's going to go ahead and put in the aircraft's last position to align those IRS units for us. Again, this is all predicated on the configuration option I just showed you. If that's something you wish to do, uh, then you can go ahead and leave that deselected. As you can see now, the uh, co-pilot's asking us for what are our ICAO codes so he can go ahead and put them into his FMS and request the, uh, the company route. So I am going to go ahead and, uh, and go ahead and import my flight plan, which will put the correct ICAO codes. And if you look down now at his uh, FMS, uh, you can see he is putting in the, uh, the company route for us typing it in. Again, no numeric values after that route. And there you have it. So the company route's been imported. He should now go over to the performance initialization page and he will put in our uh, our flight or our altitude, our planned altitude this afternoon is flight level 220. He just put that in. You can program the CDU now. And now he let us know we can do our portion of the CDU, which is actually quite easy. All right, I'm going to go complete the walk around now. Uh, we will just come over uh, to the, uh, whoop, I think I just went by it. Uh, let's go back to the index page. We just need to go to the uh, uh, the performance initialization page and do our portion, uh, which is uh, uh, super easy. So here we have it. Uh, all you have to do now is come back over to your uh, EFB set your weights and your fuel to your desired uh, amounts, uh, and then hit set payload, copy pref, uh, performance initialization data to the FMS, and then we'll set all of our V speeds here now. And there you have it. Our FMS is programmed with the exception of we will have to clear any discontinuities within the routes. But as you can see, the runways are all set. Uh, everything is good to go. And that's it. The copilot went ahead and programmed your FMS for you. Um, so all we have to do now is uh, is wait for the co-pilot to complete his walk around for the sake of expediency. Oh, and I also want to show you that the co-pilot will now also enter in your uh, your departure and your arrival um, runway lengths and elevation to show you sh uh, have accurate HUD data. Uh, he'll do that when he comes back in from the uh, we're ready to go back in from the uh, his walk around. First thing he'll do is set the altimeters. And then he will set the MCP. We're taking off one ray, one, runway 15. One, uh, one so he'll set the heading to uh, 150. And then he will come up and he will set the, uh, the uh, altitude to flight level 220. And then you'll see him set the V speeds to the, uh, to the V2, which we went ahead and set over here. So it should be 138. So now he's down here on the HUD. You can see he's setting in the... Uh, He's erasing the, the current length that's in there, and uh, for those of you familiar with Bangor, you know it has almost a two-mile runway. So there you go. He put in 11,000, uh, um, 11,444 feet. I think the altitude, the elevation, should be around 170 something for the uh, uh, for the runway. 
So here we go. Is uh, there's one, seven, and there's five, and then enter the data, and there you go. So now your HUD is programmed and your pre-flight flow is complete. He will also reprogram the HUD data uh, at the descent flow so you have correct information uh, as you prepare for your descent and arrival. Okay, that's the new feature with 1.0.3. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you for watching, and I uh, hope to see you soon.